All right, supposedly I'm online, but I can't tell. I'm trying to see if I get visual feedback here. It's the first time I've probably streamed on here yet. Okay, it seems like it's working. As long as I'm getting audio. Probably I probably streamed on here yet. Okay, it's working. Wow. Cool. All right. So uh, that was a lot easier than I thought it would be. Cool. So I guess the idea here is to generate a few, um, what do you call them? Chords, chord progressions, that's what they're called. And maybe try to branch off of that a little bit with uh, voltage. So see what happens. I guess the first thing I'm gonna do is just open up voltage here. Just go ahead and replace. And I'm really bad at FL Studio, so this should be a lot of fun. Um, more plugins. Regular old voltage, and then we're going to need something basic just so we can hear the chord progression to begin with. Come on. Come on, fruity rapper. If I ever start a hip hop project, it's going to be called Fruity Rapper. And this is going to be my setup. All right, so we need something as a default, so. I'm going to take, uh, I guess, MIDI to CV. I don't need to do it this way. Oops. That's not what I wanted. I don't need to do it this way, but I will for the sake of convenience. So MIDI to CV, which is going to come from FL Studio. If you're not sure of how I route things, uh, if anyone shows up, that'll be crazy enough. But feel free to ask questions, and I'll try my best to answer them in real time. All right, so MIDI to CV, and I guess I'm just going to load up Vital or something for now in a host. So a little bit of, I guess, cheating. It's not really full-blown modular yet, but it'll get there, I hope. We're going to say <sighs> mini plugin host Vital. Although that's not poly CV. Do they even make a MIDI to poly CV that way? Sometimes I just make up modules that I think should exist. Current bitrate is lower than the recommended. What does that mean? Does that mean this looks like shit? Well, I apologize. YouTube is nagging me and telling me this is going to look like garbage. But you know what? We're doing it anyway. Um, MIDI to poly CV. Yes, that's what I wanted. So we're going to take all of the voices and sum them together. Although, you know what? No. I'm an idiot. All right, let's just do this. Let's just do this for now. <laughs> you could reconvert and everything, but we'll just do this because it's simpler. I just want to be able to hear basically what I'm doing. So we don't need the most fancy patch. We just want it to not be annoying. Doesn't need a whole lot of movement. FL doesn't usually give me the ability. Huh. I feel like I'm not getting my own audio. That's not a good sign. Hmm. Cool. We've got streaming issues already. So desktop audio is not working like it should. Oh, again, moron problems. We're good. Yeah. Okay. We're fine. I feel like this always happens where if you expect things to go wrong, you just forget to hook them up and they do go wrong, so. Cool, everything's working. Uh, let me make sure OBS is actually getting that though. I don't wanna just have this not work at all. Oh, come on. What in the world is going on? FL Studio doesn't seem to like either my keyboard. I have caps lock on, there we go. Yeah, all right, everything's working. Cool, test completed. So I guess originally what I was saying I would do if I wanted to use this as a branching path is, uh, I guess, uh, CV, poly CV back to MIDI. And this is an interesting thing because this module doesn't really exist. Uh, this is a third party module that somebody created. And I like this a lot, but I think he also created something that will reorganize the voices because they flow into this kind of arbitrarily. So what happens is if I type in turbo fan, we'll find his dispatch module. And I think this one corrects the issues that 
voltage kind of has baked into it. So I've never really done this uh, in this way yet. These are not uniform though, I've noticed, but that's okay. You know, if he would have made these uh, uniform, that would have made a little bit more sense, but I can't uh, hold that against anyone because if anyone here has seen my modules, they're, uh, mine are just completely garbage. So I have no room to talk really. Okay, so we should be able to get, let me just generate a chord progression because it doesn't seem to get anything from my keyboard. So if we get um, like three note polyphony, that means we're fine. And I might even reduce this down to four and you'll see why in a bit, but there's a reason why I'm going to be doing some math on the notes that are coming in and that's going to be part of the show. Okay, so floating windows. I won't bitch about it this time, I promise. I love floating windows, they're awesome. Um, so we're going to generate a chord progression here. Cool, I like when it just doesn't work. All right, let's say perfect. Got a chord progression. What's going on here though? Ah, I didn't connect it up. Cool, we're good. Although, do we need round robin? I mean, that's what's going on. All right, that's not good. What happens when we take this straight here? Is something going on between these modules? Yeah. So why isn't that working? Let's get rid of dispatch, I guess, for the time being, and pretend like everything is fine because we do only have it on four voices, so it should alternate them. Uh, I'm pretty sure this sounds like nonsense if you're not into uh, modular, but don't worry. It should totally work. I'm doing this so that I can basically branch paths from uh, MIDI and stuff. If I set it up like this ahead of time, I'll have more paths to go, oh, let's take the velocity out or whatever it is I want. All right. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Oh, you know what? I think I had dispatch wired backward, did I? No. That's a good thought though. Wait, what? I feel like pitch and gate. Yeah, I don't know. Dispatch is not doing it. So we're going to get rid of dispatch. Okay, whatever. If this works, then we're fine. Because at least we have a pretty good setup for starters. All right, let's make that a little bit less annoying. And do we want to generate a different patch? or a different uh, chord progression. Do we want something with a few adventurous notes, maybe? Hey, yes. It's so close to being good. Let's lock down, lock down these guys and generate something new for that note. I guess I could have just hit generate one. I did that backward. Okay, that's pretty cool. For some reason, it doesn't seem to make the jump. Uh, we're on four voice polyphony though, so it should. Maybe we need to give it one more for good luck, but that's going to fuck up a few things if I do that. So I'm just going to let it go. I can't let that go though. It's supposed to jump. So should we give it one more voice maybe? This is not round robining. A term that I just coined. Uh, that's not either. Why? Why do I not have enough voices to complete this? It's only using like four voices right now. So here's what I think the issue is, and I'm. Uh, I didn't want to have to do this, but I think I do need to just pipe MIDI straight in because it's the only way to solve this. See, our chords actually work now. When I bring it down to four voice polyphony, it should all still work. Okay. 
Yeah, so I don't know what this is doing wrong, but we're going to have to get rid of it, I guess. This should still kind of work in its own unique way, so... Yeah, you know what? This will probably... Yeah, this will settle the routing issues for polyphony anyway. I can also pull from here, so it should be okay no matter what I'm trying to do. Let's spruce that patch up just a little bit. Uh, what do we want to do with it? A little bit of reverb, maybe. A lot of reverb. Make it dramatic. So all of it, if all goes well, is going to be based off of uh, voltage modular. So we're going to basically only use like nothing inside of FL Studio, except we can arrange it here. We can go ahead and start arranging our pattern and all that cool stuff. But hopefully everything, including drums or whatever I make, will all be generated within FL Studio and all the note uh, yeah, all the note data will correspond with it. So there should have, I think my rule will be, even if I'm creating drums, which I may or may not do, it should have some, uh, uh, what's the word? Some relation to maybe the chords coming in because everything else will too, for the most part. There will be some sequencing and stuff, but we'll see exactly how we want to do it. We might get crazy, but for starters, I can do the ARP, the ARP treatment and break out from there. So I'm going to pull the same MIDI data for the ARP, but we're going to need like clocks and stuff. So let's get a sync divider out. Sync in, sync out. All this really does is controls your BPM for those who are not into modular. Reset with the play button. Let's set that up a little bit better too. Let's get some splitters out so that we have a little bit of a cleaner routing scheme. Uh, I'm going to want sync out, sync in, sync out, play and stop. So these are going to go across the board here. And they're going to go here as well. So it looks like a lot, but it's actually just going to keep things a lot cleaner. So we can understand what's going on and so it's easier to go back and fix things. So play, stop, sync, play gate. So now I can just pull from over here instead of pulling from up there the whole time. So what I will do is reset with play. Simple enough. And we have our sync divider there. Let's go ahead and get a dummy vital out. I'm probably going to replace these. You know what I could do? I can do a lab voice. Let's do that. It's simple. It's kind of like having a VST in your back pocket, except it uh, looks cooler. So gate out and pitch out. You're going to need a mini mixer. Like I'm hunching my back in a way that is not um, conducive to not having back aches. It's your daily dose of double negatives. All right. Let's see what we got here. Trying to capture the space bar is hard in this. Ah, uh, yes. The old modular sound. Where's my envelope? The old familiar modular sequencer with nothing on it. Give it an LFO. It's got an internal LFO, which is cool. And change that frequency mod. Slow down that LFO a little bit. Hey, it's dramatic already. What do you know? Cool. Let's save this before it like crashes or something for starters. Don't crash. Oh, that stops it too. See, there's a lot that I, I'm going to try to hold my bitching. There's so much I 
don't like about the way FL handles things, but that's why we're doing it in here. So let's go ahead and ignore that hole. I'm gonna pretend like FL doesn't even exist, but oh God, it's swallowing my windows. What do I do? There's probably a way to make this uh, sit on top or something too, but it's probably some deep dive somewhere. Like, oh, in the wrapper, turns out. So I guess that's how you get your MIDI in too. So when I when I decide to do my uh, Sonic Pi and you know bespoke and all sorts of crazy routing stuff from processing, I can take MIDI in from those sources. So that is an interesting thing. Side note. This looks like a mess already, so cool. Uh, what I'm gonna do also, maybe to free up space or something, I wanna create some kind of like a mixer bus scheme maybe. So each layer maybe will have its own mixer and then get summed. Uh, I feel like I'm running out of room already. And I'm a geezer, so I won't be able to see it too well if it's down here, but whatever. So maybe what I'll do just to like have extra space is go ahead and run these mixers to one another so that I can have like, you know, infinite space and a little bit of a scheme going on. So what do we want to do next? Maybe we do want to use a sequencer, but we got to figure out first what scale we're even in. We're in G minor natural Aeolian. That's how you pronounce that. I know nothing about theory. That's why I do things this way. So what I'm going to do is get a quantizer out and match that. Let's get the micro quantizer out because that is an easy one. Although, got to keep everything tidy, so. Just in case. And then I think we said, what, G minor natural Aeolian? So G. And I don't know if that means I could just technically have that pass for G minor, but why don't we try it? I do want to have some kind of a branching path, but we can, uh, let's get the 16 step sequencer out just for starters. This may or may not be a permanent addition to the hell. This might not be a permanent addition to my rack, but it seems like a good, it seems like a good choice. Yeah, FL Studio, there's probably a way to close this window. Yeah, there we go. Hey, now I have a little bit more room, that's nice. How nice of you. God, look at all the free real estate I've got here. So, the next thing that I would probably do... See, this is the kind of shit, I don't, I don't understand why this has to be a thing. How many ASRs are gonna show up here? I had this happen with the DC source too. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. So, let's go ahead and take, uh, we got play stop, I believe. So play stop. And if I trigger that, that will work. Also want to reset from play. We'll keep it going, why not? Uh, external trigger. Let's get a separate sync divider out. I know it sounds crazy, but I'm going to try to keep things clean this time, which I'm usually terrible at. So external sync is, uh, sync out is three right here. Oops. Sync out and then play. Make that go a little bit faster maybe. Now let's see if everything syncs up. Yeah. Uh, and what am I going to do next? Not sure what exact instrument I wanna pull up. I guess we could always go the VST route for lack of better ideas and replace them later if we want. Or I guess technically what I could do is get the, uh, I don't know, poly oscillator. Or I don't even need poly, I just need a mono. <laughs> mono oscillator does not exist. Uh, super oscillator maybe? I want something kind of small though. I want something that won't take up a whole lot of room. Uh, let's see what else we have. Lab voice, perfect. And the poly envelope. 
BCA because that takes up like no room at all. Wait, I keep doing poly. I do not want poly. Wait, did it seriously remove? Uh, never mind. Oh no, it's. It's because I didn't search for it right. There we are. Grab that mix. Grab the gate from the sequencer. Grab the pitch into the oscillator. And now the fun part begins because we don't just want a random arbitrary sequence. We want an arbitrary sequence based off of the note data coming in. So the real question is, uh, which voice do we want to base it off of? Voice number three, maybe? That could be our offset. So let's grab a poly distributor. And grab the poly input. I should probably make molts for this too, but do they make poly molts? Uh, of course they do. And I have no excuse not to keep things tidy. So we're gonna do a uh, pitch and gate below. So try to remember that, I guess. So. Uh, I'm going to confuse myself eventually. Pitch gate. Pitch. Is that right? Yeah, pitch gate, pitch gate. I'm already confusing myself, so this is fun. Uh, and pitch gate. Let's hope that worked. Uh, and then we're going to grab from that. Pitch. Voice number. Maybe let's do voice number one as the offset. I don't know. If that actually worked, I'll be surprised. We'll probably be doing some debugging for the rest of the night. Oh yeah, it's in the right place. Um, although the pitch does need to go through our lovely quantizer. Then that needs to go through our mixer. We're probably also going to want to filter, but for starters, let's just do maybe a sign. Send me a sign. Hey, we're getting audio. That usually means things didn't fuck up too bad. Wow, well it works, but let's go ahead and turn that volume down. Also, if this looks like wizardry, um, I apologize. I have no life and I do this constantly, so. I can't believe that worked either, so just, uh, just putting that out there. I don't know. Usually that doesn't work on the first try, but I guess it's my lucky night. So we're gonna definitely want a filter for that. Let's give it a ladder filter. Still feel like I'm running out of real estate here for some godforsaken reason. Plug that in. Try that again. We'll give it some effects too, I'm sure. actual volume down though for it to make sense now that is aggressive so let's find some ways to subdue that maybe a uh, what is it mini LFO I'm waking up in five hours. It's a good joke. Then I'll finally feel awake. So we definitely need some effects on that. 
to make it like snazzier. So uh, let's go with the delay maybe. So, in case you are curious, it won't let me save, I guess, unless I do this. There we go, saved. So, in case you're wondering, like, what the hell is going on, basically, uh, that's the offset for the sequencer. So, the sequencer has whatever I put in here as the default values, and it stays there, obviously. These are all individual constant values. But... Voice number one from the MIDI, so whichever one that turns out to be, like it, it's probably round robining all the time, but when it does that, it's going to grab one of the notes and offset it by that amount. So essentially, you could just say the sequencer has some relation to the incoming chords. So the incoming chord progression has some say over what the sequencer does. Therefore, doing all of this uh, isn't just arbitrary. It's not just like making an entire like separate song in modular. It's literally all being based off of this. And as you'll see, what I might do with even the kick drums is base them off of the CV or something like that. So all of the data here, even in terms of, uh, I don't think there's probably a way to do velocity when you generate chord progressions, but like I'm sure there's, there's rhythm. So we'll be able to base the drums and stuff off of particular rhythm and voicing, but uh, if there were a way to fluctuate the velocity, which I think there even is. Yeah, I want to keep that chord progression, man. I don't know if it's because I'm really tired or something, but I really like this. See, it grabbed a different voice that time. And that's kind of the point. Or maybe it was like halfway in between or something weird. But yeah, I think you can articulate is what I was going to say. You can uh, you can chop, you can articulate, you can do things. So these are actually useful tools, which I might want to do. The ARPs and things like that won't fire as much if they're articulated or like pre-ARPed in here. But that doesn't mean that there's not other things inside of Voltage that could benefit from that. Like, uh, again, drums and rhythm and stuff like that. But as you'll see, uh, if we get far enough drums and rhythm and all that stuff can be uh, basically like Boolean logic in and out. So you could have it be like, well, if two conditions are true or even with comparators, if two conditions are true and or, you know, some other condition reaches a certain threshold, like, oh, this note is above C3, then then what? Then what does it do? Does it do something different? Uh, we'll see how complex we actually get with those because, you know, sometimes sometimes it sounds cooler in my head and other times it uh, it does turn out to be really complicated and it's cool, but it doesn't have to be complicated to be good either. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm just kind of uh, riffing off of the one thing that it gives me or my original idea would have been to generate just a handful of them too and sequence them, so... Go ahead and clone to pattern two and just do the same thing. Riff off of that riff. Generate a new chord progression uh, without locking any of these down this time. I mean, I love the fact that I didn't even consider this to be a possibility originally, but I love the fact that you can demo it this way too. So. Seeing if it works well with the ARPs and stuff is kind of part of the fun. Oh, God. Yeah, well, we could actually make that, too. But we probably want pattern one to go out a few times before we get to pattern two. Pattern two is pretty exotic, though, so far. So we're going to consider that to be the exotic pattern. Pattern one is going to be our sane pattern. I don't know if this naming scheme is even going to hold up. But let's clone... Seems cool, so uh, let's go ahead and riff off of that again. 
by and pardon me for uh again i'm i'm new to fl studio i think i started using it last year and that's is am i even i'm not even in the piano roll what am i doing this is the piano roll so whenever i say things about how much i hate fl studio i'm really just kidding around i'm just not used to it and there's a lot of things i don't like about it but again i wouldn't be doing videos like this if i didn't also really like the features that it has so that's one thing to keep in mind. I've gotten some angry comments before when I, you know, disrespect people, and I don't mean to do that, but... It's really coming from a place of, I like this DAW. There's just a few things in it that I wish were a little bit better. Ah oh man, that sounds so cool. Sorry, I'm too excited about this. Okay. We're gonna call that uh, something. Something, that's perfect. I think I wanna start it with something. I want this to like just riff on a couple of times here. And I'm gonna change to the song so that when I go something, I can go to Sane and then I can go back to Exotic. So for those who don't use FL, I'm I'm just patterning these out so that it'll play them in sequence. Those don't really go, but it doesn't have to loop because that was just the end of the song. So we'll maybe come back to a better resolve after that exotic pattern plays eventually or riff off of it now because we have the technology. Go ahead and clone it. And um, generate chord progression. I, I keep doing this. I keep clicking on the playlist when it's when it's this that I need. Apparently I am tired. Generate chord progression, and that's conventional. This this must just be a really cool like uh, chord progression, right? The G minor, what natural is it? I mean, that last one is so generic, like the other one. I don't know, maybe it's a good bridge. It sounds a little more generic and like it doesn't move very much, but I guess there's some parts of the song that you kind of want to be a little bit less dramatic than others. Let me check on my YouTube. Is everything going okay? Yes, I think we're good. Wait, is this private? Is that what's going on here? This whole thing is private? Huh. Goes to show you what I know about streaming. Okay, I guess it's only going to be live when I'm done. All right, whatever. That's fine. You live and learn, I guess. So, what should we add to that? We definitely need some kind of like drums going on, so. Let's go ahead and get the 909 out. And the drum pattern sequencer. Well, if it's not called that, then what is it called? Drum trigger sequencer, haha. -ha.
about the things we do to keep our patch clean. All the time it takes. It's like when you're writing code and you're just commenting shit because it's the only way to do things sometimes. Although, this is not like comments. This is like writing the cleanest code you can so that you don't have to write comments. Because I do have my own comment shit here, like... I could be writing things out, but I'm not. Alright, so, uh... Play stop. What is it? Play stop. Sync play game, so... Sync... Play... Play stop and sync divide. Start playing that again and hopefully, yeah, there we go. Cool. So technically it's based off of the BPM. I'm not doing any um, CV to uh, triggers yet, which I could be doing. The problem with CV to trigger at the moment is that, oh no, you know what? I, I will use a little bit of CV to trigger because I can do that with the arpeggiator. Let's actually speed that up double time there. I think I want it to be a solid do, 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 do. Can we get the console mixer out because this thing was pretty much made for drums on purpose. It's nice and clean. I know I'm doing overkill mini mixers, but better than having too few mixers when you need them. Again, it's all about the cleanliness of the patch, so. I'm gonna get some, uh, maybe a micro hi-hat and, yeah, I love having hits around, so lots of hats and hits are good. My favorite snare lately is the micro snare. Shout out to Rware and Synthetic Future for making a really good snare drum that works for Pretty much every occasion. Here, I can even demo it. Just, it's just a solid snare. All right, so I'll just hook all of these up here. I don't know if I'm gonna use a spacer or what, but I'll keep them a little bit clean here. And I'm not sure what I wanna do like, I'm not sure if I want to give that mixer a two-channel gain, but probably. What do they even call that? I think, um, there it is, two-channel gain. I want to actually give... I didn't do a whole lot, but that's okay. So one thing I want to do next is uh, instead of just basing the hi-hats off of, you know, a drum sequence that's based off of the tempo, that's all cool because that is incoming data that we have. But I also think it'd be a little bit cooler to base at least one of these, if not more, off of the arpeggio gate or something. So we're going to do, um, yeah, I think just the gate out, right? It should make sense. Unless it doesn't have a gate out. Where is it? Yeah, it's got a gate out. So let's try that. I don't think I have it plugged in though. Wait, did that? Uh, wrong place. Sneaky. Let's try that. So we ended up saving a mixer slot just on the off chance that we care. But 
Another cool thing we can do as part of that is give it a probability. Oops, not a probability Jeb. Probability Jen. So I'm going to give it a 50% chance, I guess. I think that's what we're on. 50% chance of firing. Pretty cool start. We can also do something a little bit more generic for the next one. Let's just give it an actual pattern here and gate out. Wow, my patch is really uh, slowing down, isn't it? And if I perform an accent, which I don't know where that is. Or even is my accent toggle. be away I think it's that one yeah there we go just a little bit of variance there so if this doesn't continue to lag and it does allow me to keep going and we can even do more. We definitely need a baseline. So I will show how I would do something like that too. So I'm gonna duplicate all of our necessities here because we tend to use these for pretty much everything. So the interesting thing about a baseline is that it is mono, so all we really need is one voice. And we typically want the lowest voice. We want what would either be considered the root or even just the lowest note out of all of them. So an easy way to do that is with a min and max module. So if I take that, and we're only using four voices if I recall anyway. So that was the point of this. So what I can do is grab the poly thing again. So I have poly pitch up here and I have poly gate down here. I also have sync over here if I recall and I have play over here. So if I take the poly distributor, what's cool about this is we're only using four of them. So I take the pitch data and I would say, give me the most low note out of all of them. Now, way to test that is to go ahead and just bust out um, probably vital or something like that. Oh, that's apparently not a way to do it. We're going to have to say plug. All right, so we also need CB to MIDI because, you know, not everything can be uh, interconnected without some extra modules, and that's okay. So the pitch will be the minimum of all of them. So four voices, again, four voices. We can't even exceed four voices, so that's good. And with that, I should be able to theoretically, I feel like we need a, I don't use blanks enough, but now's a good time to do it because I do want to keep this patch clean. You know, I actually care this time. This is the first time I've probably given a shit in my entire life. So, hey, got to start somewhere. I don't know. You're probably supposed to write things here, right? Um, I should probably actually do that. I should say base line because I do give a shit. Um, and then drums continued, I guess. 
drum modules over there. If I can give it an arrow. I don't know. I'll come back to this tomorrow and be like, what the hell was I trying to say? Alright, I think I think that's self-explanatory, but uh let me save FL Studio so that if it crashes, we theoretically have all of this data still, because this is kind of a huge patch. Oh, one thing I'm going to do to keep things a little bit cleaner is create a bus. So I'm going to create a mixer bus, which will be the base bus. And I'm going to create another one that is base bus two. And what that does is it allows me to make connections without using wires. Base bus one and base bus two can go into that mixer. Although, which one has the gain on it? I don't remember. Now we are going to have to gate, so... We'll do the same thing with... Uh, actually, we just need a mono gate, believe it or not. Which is kind of crazy, right? We're going to have to add another rack, so... Uh, micro bolt. And I'm doing this to differentiate between, we have a lot of different things going on here. This is going to be our mono gate. Maybe just for the sake of simplicity or, oh God, for the sake of simplicity or maybe overcomplication, I'm not sure what I'm doing, is pitching gate. Because we will inevitably need both. It just happens like that. Why can't I just select these two though? So we're going to have just a regular mono pigeon gate. And I know it's crazy, but it's actually less cluttered than if I were to have just wires going absolutely everywhere. So sometimes it's worth the effort. All right, so we got pitch and we got gate and they're all wired up. So. What I can do is I can go ahead and just grab the mono gate. Oh, I never even picked vital, so what, what do you know? Oh god, something went wrong. Panic, where are you? Not sure where I went wrong. Although it really doesn't like that routing for some reason. So it's almost like I have killed it with too much. So, oh man. Where do, how do I even begin to unravel this one? So I guess maybe instead of hosting vital, I can try something that is a little bit less than vital. You know what? It won't even have gates. Let's just let's just have it do. Uh, let's just let it be an oscillator all on its own. So just use the regular old cherry audio <laughs> cherry audio oscillator, or maybe the lab voice. Let's do that. So it will have pitch data, but it does need MIDI and all that stuff. All it really needs is our pitch data, which is a sum or a minimum function on each voice coming in and plug that into the mixer. Yeah, so I will do, I guess, maybe just like an amp to keep things straight and plug it into the play gate so that it's not happening when we're not playing the song. That would make the most sense. So uh, play stop, play gate, or sync out, play gate, I think. I did that wrong. Yeah, so it is working, see, so. It's crackling though, so that means we pushed it to the absolute limit, I think. But the bass is working just fine. So 
So I guess I can't go any further. I thought I could go further with this patch, but all I could really do from this point on is, uh, well, I could try to sum some of the mixing down. Cherry Audio does seem to have an issue, and this might have to do with the DSP domain in general, but it has an issue where if you have too many mixers going at the same time, or even too many mixer inputs or outputs inside of a module you're building, it starts doing shit like this. So what I could probably do is sacrifice a few mixers and start plugging them into each other. Oh God, I didn't want all of that to go away. Jeez, dude, just that. So I can go ahead and take that and plug it into here, for example. Although, holy fuck. Yeah, it's still pretty crackly though, so that sucks. So in theory, if uh, if I had a better system or maybe if I wasn't using FL, I don't want to blame FL Studio for any of this, but I'm sure in another universe and in another paradigm, I could actually keep going with this and like I wanted to and uh, do some cool things. You know what I might do if I can get the um, if I can get this to stream live because I don't know what's going on with the stream right now, but it's not streaming live. Uh, if I can get all that to work out, I could always try. There's a, I'll show it off right now in case anyone's, in case anyone wants to see this, uh, there's a jukebox. So what this does is it's actually, it's got a weird UI and it's kind of funny, but it allows me to load up an entire pack of MIDI. So what I could theoretically do, if I suspect this is an issue with FL Studio, is I could print off a whole bunch of these and then just sequence them right here. So you can toggle them like next to MIDI. That's like your MIDI bank. There's also a way for it to resume and restart by itself essentially. And I think it was, uh, I think it was Andy's, um, what does he even call it? It's like a trigger, it's like a trigger, uh, like a flip flop, but what, what was it called? It's like a uh, it's like a giant clock divider, but I think it was like a trigger processor. Hmm. I'd have to find it again. Could have sworn I stuck it in my favorites, but maybe not. Anyway, there's a module that will theoretically tick a certain amount of times and um, wrap around. So when this actually hits the end of it, because of the way this is programmed, it'll go to like no file. Even if you have like, you know, I don't know how many it actually allows you to load up, but if you have less than 127 files in there, it'll just go to silence at the end, which is not always what I want. So you can have it wrap around kind of like what this is already. Nah, I can't. Uh, what do you do? Control. Like this is already doing. 